More recently, this time maybe just over 100 years ago instead of thousands, uh, a humorist named Finley Peter Dunn is remembered for saying, the job of the newspaper is to comfort the afflicted and to afflict the comfortable. Preachers were quick to apply these words to their own craft. A good sermon would be one that would do the same, to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Dr. Philip McLarty stretches it further, saying the job of every Christian is to offer hope and consolation to those who are hurting, while standing strong against the evils of injustice and oppression and selfish pursuit. It seems to me that it is hard to tell who's afflicted, that there are all kinds of afflictions, that to be human is to suffer. Life is difficult, Scott Peck opens his best-selling book. Once you know the stories people carry, it becomes hard to flesh out who to comfort and who to afflict, because so often so many of us need both of those things. Am I right? So where is the comfort? If the grass withers and the flower fades, if our temporary comforts flip easily into discomfort, if life means change, and change means pain, and suffering happens when we resist that pain, where is the comfort? Though the grass withers and the flower fades, though human life can take us through the wilderness, though it can bring us to exile and home again, sometimes more than once, Isaiah can comfort the people not because of his own strength or ability or confidence, not because he can assure them things won't change again or they won't know pain again, but he realizes that he can comfort them because of something else. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God stands forever. The truth of God is eternal. The light of the world shines out as the everlasting thing, the transcendent thing, the sure foundation on which we can place our trust and our hope and our peace. In fact, there's good news. There are good tidings, not only for Isaiah to offer, but for all people to offer, for all people to climb up the mountain to proclaim. They can cry out, as Isaiah says, Here is your God. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. It's not because of Isaiah's uniqueness or capacity or eloquence that he can comfort the people. But it's because the love of God is the people's source and destination. It's where they came from and where they're going. Whatever happens to them, whatever wilderness or exile they know, whatever change and pain and suffering they have experienced or will experience, God's got them. Like a mother holding them against her chest, or a father gathering his babies in his arms, or a shepherd guiding its sheep, God holds them through all of it. God's with them. That's the promise of Emmanuel of Christ, who is the light of the world, who is the good shepherd, who is the word of God, who is God who comes and is born into this world 